But every day you have to fill out a trip sheet and you have to write down like the bill of lading number which is a manifest number. You have to keep track of that, keep track of what your lead trailer was, um, the date, the time you left the terminal, the time you got to the next terminal. Um, mark on there if you had to hook a set or, or break a set and keep that paperwork and turn it in at the end of the week before they send off for payroll the other thing you have to do while you're doing that which it doesn't take long to do that is you have to go on this is a people net device right here it's my eld and i guess a lot of people don't use people net which i i know that not everyone uses it but you got to go on there you send off an email to your payroll department at your terminal and make sure that the payroll terminal, <laughs> the payroll department at your terminal is receiving these messages. And what they are, it just tells you where you're at, which trailer you're hooking up, who you are, uh, was it loaded, was it empty, what's the manifest number, it wants to know stuff like that. So you have to input all that information. Basically, yeah, a lot of that is the same information that you, you're writing on your trip sheet. And it's, yeah, it's just a digital version of what you just wrote down. So you got to send that off so that you for sure get paid for that stuff. And of course, if you have to drop, break the set or something, you got to put that in as well. And uh, these people nets devices, they do have an option for navigation, but I don't know if these work or not. I don't. I, when I first got hired on, I was told they didn't work. But maybe they do. I've never used it for navigation. I always had my own GPS. And by the way, the company doesn't give you a GPS. All right, that's something you're going to have to buy. And I know $300 seems like a lot to drop on a truck GPS, but if it's going to help you make more money consistently, go ahead and invest in one. Now, when I first started here, I just used Google Maps. The thing about trucking with Google Maps is you've got to have a little common sense, okay? If that, you gotta pay attention to the road because Google obviously is designed for cars. So, Google might try to take you down a road with a 12 foot seven bridge. You gotta watch out for those signs. Google will try to take you down a road that says no trucks. You have to look for those signs. And at night, it can be more difficult to see a no truck sign if you're in an area that isn't lit up very well. So that's something you just, you gotta be aware of that. And not every state highway is a safe route for trucks. <laughs> You, some of you already know that. Some of you may have found that out the hard way. So it is still good to have an atlas and kind of look over it and kind of match your Google Maps up with your atlas. But man, you're constantly going. You don't really have time sometimes to match it up with your atlas. So, you know, if you're hitting four, three or four terminals a night, you've never been to any of these terminals. Uh, Estes does provide you with like final mile instructions. So it'll kind of give you a general idea of how to get there from the interstate or something. Like it might, it might say from Interstate 40 West. It'll say Interstate 40 West, mile marker such and such, take exit, whatever that exit is. And it might tell you to turn left or right. And then it'll tell you, you know, in detail what to do next. So you will probably receive some of those. Uh, I don't know about that many of them or so. And that's pretty much it. I mean, the rest of it, finding the terminal, the terminal address, that's all left up to you, the driver. Which, like I said, Estes does have a website with all that information on it. And then if you go to that website, it'll show you the address, and all you have to do is click on that Get Directions link, and I think it opens up Google Maps. It might open up Apple Maps. I can't remember, but it will open up a map, and you can follow that on your phone if you don't have a truck GPS. I do recommend a truck GPS, especially, mainly for hazmat routing. 
then again the hazmat routing on the GPS could be wrong like I was in Dallas uh, the other week or whatever and I think I told you guys about this but that GPS was telling me this is not a hazmat route however loop 12 where I was at going from 35 or 635 on to loop 12 it was telling me that little piece of loop 12 was not a hazmat route however there was a road sign that was telling me loop 12 and it had has you know the hc circled with a green circle telling me that that was a hazmat route but the gps didn't think it was so that can be a little finicky from time to time so double check especially if you already know where you're going but for the most part it works perfect man you just gotta you'll figure out where you know if it's right or if it's wrong and obviously you can update these things uh, on your computer and all that stuff so I would invest in one now the one I have is really big honestly it's a it's a seven inch display hey what's up business I honestly think it's a little too big for this truck because I'm so close to the windshield that it's like boom right there and uh, it's just so big now i would get the smaller the five inch display if i could go back and buy another one i'll probably get a five inch display because they're not that big they don't take up much of your windshield and honestly it would be easier to store that up there or down here or in the center or wherever you know but that's my I bought the seven inch version because I thought, well, it's easier to see when you're driving down the road. And it is, it's super easy to, to read from your just sitting back like normal. And I didn't think the five inch version was gonna be big enough for me to see clearly, but uh, maybe it isn't, I don't know, I don't have one. But I think I would rather have that than the seven inch version. Now I did buy the version with a dash cam, but man, that dash cam footage is crap it is crap it's not even good road footage i mean this gopro would make a better dash cam than that damn thing and besides if you work at estes most of now this truck does not have a forward facing camera in it it never has had one but a majority of our trucks do have a forward facing camera so if you were to get into an incident if you're following too close for too long it will make a video and you will have to review that video uh, you know if you slam on your brakes too hard it will make a video if you have uh, if you turn a curve too sharp the rollover thing will come on and it will, it'll make a video showing that you took that corner too fast or whatever and uh, so you will have to review those videos so be mindful of that and how do you know if it's recording well there'll be a message it'll just pop up right here on your eld right in the center of the screen it'll say whatever your violation was it'll pop up there and it'll say recording in effect or something along those lines to indicate you know that it's recording right now so uh, you'll go and you'll have to watch like a three minute video. You'll review it with uh, your doc supervisor or your terminal manager or somebody. And that's it. You just review it. It's not a big deal. I mean, you know, obviously you don't want to get that because that's more time you got to spend in the office when you go to the office. And plus, you know, for me, I like to be, uh, I'm not a complete perfectionist, but I don't like getting that stuff, you know. I'd rather just, hey man, I don't want to be on the naughty list or whatever. So I'm just giving you a heads up about the forward-facing cameras. And uh, we do have the Elite Pass. That's the big white box up there. Right here. It's a scale bypass. And that will cover... I believe that covers every toll booth in the country. Well, at least the ones that we run through. The thing about these is every once in a while... They take AAA batteries. I think it's two AAA batteries. So every once in a while, if you're going, if you bypass the scale and that thing doesn't go off, and you, even if, because you know, even when the scale is closed, that thing will still go off. Now, not every scale, but but a lot of the scales they will. So if you're driving around for like a week and that thing hasn't beeped or anything, you might want to change the batteries. 
triple A battery, two triple A's. And by the way, that's just Velcroed up there. So you just take, you can just take it off. It's got a cover on the back. It's a battery cover. You can clearly see it. Pull it off and just put two AA batteries in there. Throw the other ones in the trash. Put it back up there. You're good to go. Now, I know somebody's going to say, does the company reimburse you for that? Is it, I'm, I'm sure they would. But more than likely, you're, you can just use your Love's points at the truck stop. Therefore, the company has already paid for them. From what I understand, if you do use your Love's points, you will not get reimbursed for any of that money that's spent on your uh, royalty card. Which is fine because you only got those points because Estes bought fuel out of Love's, alright? You didn't spend any money out of pocket. So that's one of the things I would use that Love's rewards card for. And I've had to change out headlights before going down the road. It's raining, it's dark, and a headlight goes out. I'll stop by the Loves, change out a headlight. Well, not on this run. I'll just stop by the shop down there. But if you're out in the middle of nowhere, stop by the Loves. And then those lights are like $32, I believe. So you just swipe that Loves card. It doesn't come out of your pocket, you know? So it is good to get to get a few points on your Loves card. Besides, even if you are the type of guy that wants to get fuel at a terminal every single day that you're driving, there are still going to be some times where you're going to have to get fuel at the truck stop. So if you're going to get fuel at the truck stop, make sure you swipe that card and, you know. And of course, sometimes, I mean, you might leave the terminal that has fuel you're like man i forgot to get fuel that's happened to me plenty of times <laughs> all right so i go down the road somewhere 100 miles on the road to a loves fill up the truck so but when i got this truck there was no camera there's still no camera and there was no toll pass and so i was running tolls and finally they put a toll pass in here but i remember one time I ran across 90 in Indiana, uh, Indiana, Ohio, and then I ran, uh, I'm sorry, I ran 80 across Ohio, I believe it was, and 90 across the state of Indiana. And anyway, I was going to Pennsylvania. Well, the toll, I paid one toll out of pocket. I think it was like 76 bucks, and uh, the Ohio toll was... Uh, it was like 50 something dollars. I was like, no, I'm not paying this one. And I told the lady at the toll booth, hey, I can't. Because, you know, you guys know if you run up in Indy or across Ohio, they don't have just a express lane. You have to stop. There's a gate blocking you from leaving without paying and all that. And both, both states have that. So I, I, I slid my debit card in the first one to pay for it. But the second one, the Ohio toll, I said no. So they asked me to pull out. I, I waited probably 15, 20 minutes. The state trooper came up and he just wrote out like a little warning ticket, giving the guest us seven days to pay this toll. And that worked out just fine. And I did get reimbursed in cash, not on my next check, but in cash. When I got back home to my home terminal, I asked my terminal manager if he could reimburse that toll for me. I showed him where it was charged in my bank account. And he says yes. And he counted out the money right there in front of me and handed it to me, cash. So it's not like they're going to put it on your next paycheck. Well, they could do that. I don't know. But it's usually a cash refund. Uh, a cash refund is what you're going to get. So anyway, all that stuff works out. So that's kind of how that stuff works out. But uh, if you don't have a pass when you first get here, you will get one. So that's if you get a new truck. Now, obviously, if you get a used truck, there's going to be a toll in there. You ain't really going to have to worry about it. 